What's going on everyone? Adam Mattis here. And today I want to talk about inner voice movement and counterpoint. So when I think of inner voice movement on the piano, I often think of slow ballads with gorgeous counter melodies that weave, you know, between the melody on top and the bass line on bottom and the chords in the middle and things are moving just beautifully like little bells and sparkles in the air. And that's all good. It's very, very useful to be able to do that style of inner voice movement and have those kinds of voice uh, leading techniques in your ballad playing. But I think what's kind of underrated is the fact that having really strong inner voice movement and contrapuntal playing can make you swing harder. Uh, we're going to study how having this, this technique of inner voice movement can really like propel your, your solo piano swing style to the next level. And we're going to study it, uh, this technique, with the king of modern counterpoint, the great Fred Hirsch. We are so lucky here at Open Studio to have recorded Fred's only online course, Thoughts and Experiments uh, with Solo Piano. And so we're going to pull straight from that course. Uh, Fred plays Billy Strayhorn's amazing uh, Upper Manhattan Medical Group. And we're going to take just the head of that and even just one section of the head and really dig deep into this one little section and just spend some time kind of making it feel how the great Fred Hirsch makes it feel. Uh, so there is a PDF, by the way. That's yours to keep. You can download that. Uh, right here in the description. You can take the full course, the full head and intro of what Fred Hirsch plays here on Billy Strayhorn's Upper Manhattan Medical Group is yours to take home. Now is usually the time in the video where I do a little pitch for the course, but I don't have to pitch this course. It's been our most popular course in a year, <laughs> this Fred Hirsch course, because it's so good. You just get to spend time with Fred and that's a sales pitch enough. So let's check out what we're going to do today. As I mentioned, we're going to be working on Billy Strayhorn's Upper Manhattan Medical Group with Fred. And let's just listen to the intro. Like I said, we're gonna just take the head, and, but I want you to listen how Fred uses these, these inner voice movements and this counterpoint to really make it swing. I mean, it swings so hard the way he approaches it. And check it out. Here's the intro. And he goes into a crazy good solo. But we are just dealing with the head today. Isn't that amazing? So you can hear how he uses these little inner voice le leading things to make it like he it really affects the time and how the, the piece swings, how the piece feels. Uh, if you're like me and you kind of came up with just like left hand chord, right hand melody, and I hope I know some rooted voicings for solo piano. Uh, this can be a complete game changer. And this is like the promised land of the freedom to use the instrument for everything that it can be used for, to help propel the rhythm as a solo pianist in a way that you really can't do uh, on any other instrument. It's such a cool sound. So as I mentioned, we're just gonna deal with the head. And in fact, we're just gonna deal with the first A section, the form of Upper Manhattan Medical Group is A-A-B-A. -A and the rather short uh, eight bar A sections here. And let's see here, yeah, 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 there's, that's where we are. And I just want to work with the first A, but I want to do more than just read it on Sound Slice. We're going to memorize it. We're going to take our time and just go uh, very narrow, but very deep. So we're just going to work on this first A section, and we're just going to walk with Fred here. Like We are just going to be able to play what Fred is playing, and we're going to learn it um, first by playing along with the Sound Slice, and then we're going to take the Sound Slice away to just listen to it and play along. So... Let's get going. We're, of course, going to start slower than 100%. 60% is a nice place to start. I'll start a bar before, and let's just listen here to the first A again. I might take it phrase by phrase.
So that's all we're doing, just those eighth bars. So the melody. Right? Let's just get the very first. Just those first two bars here. So I'm just going to take my time. He glisses up. And here is where that inner voice movement comes in. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that great? And then a little walk down. Now, one thing that we need to pay attention to that's as important as the notes that Fred's playing is how Fred is playing these notes because he is not playing all notes the same volume and all. There's a lot of little ghosting. There's such a light touch. He's got an amazing light touch that works really well for this style. Let's hear that again, just those first two bars. All right, let's try that. Here we go. I'm going to loop it here so that we can just keep going. Try it again. I'm just going to do the left hand here so I can get that fingering. Again, again, again. got it here. No music. Let's see if we can get it uh, from what we've seen here by ear. See what I'm saying here? See what I'm saying? If we go between these two things, let's try it again. Some things to kind of keep in mind here as we loop this is that first chord that's split between the hands, right, is an A minor, right, because it's an F, F minor 7 flat 5, which, or sorry, it's not an A minor, A flat minor, excuse me, F minor 7 flat 5, which of course is like A flat minor over F. up here to what is effectively a B-flat triad, but you can just barely hear it. Let's try this again. Again, we're going very narrow here. We're going to spend a lot of time on a little material so that we really, really absorb it because it's important. I want to be able to feel this the way Fred feels it and be able to play this the way Fred plays it. Let's try it again. Here we go. Let's extend 
it now. I think we've got that. Let's do the next two bars. Actually, let's do these two bars on their own, just so we can get. So something to note here, right? There's this, it's an E flat minor seven, and it's got like a major seven that's gonna do a little walk down. Fred's going to kind of imply sort of an A7 harmony here, like a little A7 to the A flat 7 over that. It's just brilliant. Let's try that again. Got to get that timing. So here, right here at the end of this bar here, right, the, the bass line, that's making an A triad. That D flat, which we can think of as C sharp as well, C sharp, E natural, A to the E flat, A flat of A flat. So he's literally outlining A triad, A flat. Let's try it again. That kind of those kind of systems help me to remember what's about to happen here. changes on the E flat. Gotta get the timing. Oof, a little late there. So this is so cool. So on that A flat seven chord, Everything kind of like doom ga doom ding goom bow, right? Let's try it again. Thank you. 
let's try it now. Let's try and go without the music showing it. We want to really remember this here. Keep this touch light. Listen to Fred's touch on this. It's so light. It makes a lot of room. There's a lot of space for the individual voices to happen. That's a huge part of this, that the dynamics aren't super overwhelming and that the touch is nice and, and uh, controllable is what it is. now take it back let's just take it back to the top of the chorus of this a section and let's see if we can get this first six bars <laughs> all right so one one note here just want to want to note something very clearly uh, so if you're like me and you had forgotten what we had done before, what we had just learned, you are a human being who is learning something. And that's how that works. A lot of people get really frustrated with that. But just know that this is when, as we go back and we have to relearn stuff, this is when we actually lock it in. So be kind to yourself. This is part of the process. You're not dumb and you're not slow. It's just how it works. We have to learn something, kind of forget it, come back and relearn it. We'll have it even stronger. It's how everybody does it. So you're not alone there. I didn't remember it either. It's coming back though. It's getting better. Keep going. It's getting better. Getting better. Keep going. Ooh, it's coming close.
time here one more time just a little bit of a breather it's a lot of brain work going on here as we learn this great stuff isn't that so great though you can probably see if you're like me you can see the value and the use for this in our own playing we only have two bars left by the way of our task and again you know this is this is learning something from a master like the true way of like just listening and repeating and playing along with the master and listening repeating and playing along and maybe you write it out and you can reference it uh, if you're if you're more of a learner like that but you do not have to learn a whole solo in a day or an hour. You can literally work on eight bars or six bars or four bars. It doesn't have to be anything grand. You can just every day just tackle just a little bit and you will be a better player. There's no doubt about it. That's how we get better. So just a little bit of a perspective here that a lot of people don't transcribe because they feel like, oh, well, if I transcribe the Sonny Rollins solo, it's going to take you know, two months or whatever. It doesn't have to. You can just do eight bars like we're doing today. Like you don't think we're learning something valuable with every single note here that we're learning from Fred today? It's amazing. Okay, that was just a little mental break from me. Let's check out, I think I have those first six bars at 60%. So let's check out uh, just the next, was that six bars? No, that was four bars. Sorry, that was the first four bars. Um, Let's, actually, let's check out the rest of it because the last two bars aren't very complicated. I think we could probably get. I think we could probably get the the, the last four bars of this just on its own. So let's listen to it. So this chord here on the D flat diminished major seven, which is, and again, our chord changes here are kind of sort of typical chord changes. It's not reflective always of what he's playing. We just wanted to see, let you see what he plays over these kinds of changes. So check it out. So here's our shape here. It's kind of low in the weeds there. So that's E, G, and A. To like an E flat minor shape. That's what that is. And then he does this. Come on. And then down to the G flat. So again, like uh, it says D flat minor seven. Those are kind of like standard, maybe real bookish changes. And he's already going to a G flat seven there. As that's Which is interesting for us to know, you know. And I'm just going through here just to kind of get the general shapes. And then he does just this beautiful G flat seven, uh, 13 flat nine voicing, pretty typical. But again, breaking it up here, like playing the first four notes up here and then just dropping that G flat down there. So let's see if we can get this at 
is this? I think that might be G natural there. Is that? That's G natural and E natural. Oh, okay, so he's just doing this. Oh yeah, yeah, they're, they're naturalized right before it. That's my bad. So he's just raising that A in that first bar here. He's just raising that A. That makes so much more sense. Okay. Whew. We'll get it. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. That's that first A section uh, here on Upper Manhattan Medical Group. Isn't it a great tune, too? My goodness. 
So beautiful, so well written. Let's see if we can do this all A section, and then we're gonna try to take it up to tempo. Again, we're at 60% here, so we really wanna be able to get it up to at least 80 or 90% so we can really feel Fred's pulse here, because 60% it's a little bit wishy-washy just because of the technology. So let's try it here at 60% just to make sure that we kind of have it until we get it, and then let's, uh, let's take it up. good to forget. Time. One more time, we're going to turn off the notation. the goal right to be able to do that to be able to swing using those inner voice movements uh, it's so great so fantastic so let's take it up 70 percent i'll leave the notation up here as we start and then i'll start taking it away again
see if we can do it. Let's see if we can do it. something here folks i think is this good i think this is really good <laughs> this is really this is where i want to be 80 percent here so now so this is really good even though it might be a little bit more technically challenging we've been doing this now for like 30 minutes so we really kind of have it at least the sound of it of these eight bars this is the advantage of going narrow but very very deep right is that we really spend a lot of time with a, as little material as possible and it becomes more and more ingrained in us having to relearn it in different ways different tempos here's 80 percent. what's great about getting faster though even though it gets more technically challenging is that we're going to start swinging harder it's going to be more like what fred was playing in the moment and it, we're going to be able to really hear the uh, minutia the the faster we go or at least the closer to the original tempo that we go let's try it <laughs> Not bad. You can really start to copy Fred a little bit more in his in his entire um, entire vocabulary that he's using, articulation, feel, and touch. Although I'm not on an instrument nearly as able to give me that as he is, for sure. But still try to mimic it as close as possible for sure. do it same thing but without the music for us no problems for us at all okay 90 percent. i think we're going to take it all the way up to 100 percent. why not here we go okay, this is real this is 
is real. what's happening it's just the repetition is starting to get to me i just need a second to shake it out we're going to change the tempo anyway up to 100 percent, and this will be the last couple times we do it this is the way to do it in my opinion to really again sometimes we take a very wide dive here very wide shallow dive on things which is fine too to just kind of get an overlook of things of the situation but on something as deep as you know fred's fred solo piano concepts I mean, it really pays to go even phrase by phrase and just see what's happening and study and listen and listen and listen and listen. And of course, this is like Fred goes into a deep dive himself on this in the course Thoughts and Experience with Solo Piano. So I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. I got a lot out of it. Just these eight bars. I'm, I have so much to practice for the next few weeks now. It's great. But this is getting us that sound. So do we dare try it at 100% with the master himself? Let's try it. Not bad. So that is the good work, everybody. Thank you so much for practicing with me. Again, check out the PDF of the entire uh, head here that we're going to give you just an excerpt from from the course. And check out the course. Again, I don't really have to go on a 
on a very hard sell here because it sells itself, as you see. Uh, thanks very much. I'll be back next week. Until then, happy practicing. <laughs>